This is the electronic pianola circuit. We have our battery hooked up and we have the audio output hooked up as well. These are the light sensors here on the green wires and uh, these are the light dependent resistors. The larger chip on the top here produces two square wave oscillators and the pitch of those oscillators can be controlled by the potentiometers on the side here. The chip underneath, the smaller one, that's been used as something called a comparator. So as the light levels change on the sensors, the voltage seen by this chip changes and it will compare that voltage to a threshold voltage which is set by this trim potentiometer on the bottom right. So as you adjust that trim part there, you can uh, adjust the sensitivity of the, uh, of the light sensors I'm just going to switch it on and we can have a quick listen to it and if we just turn the threshold down we should hear the oscillators and we can adjust the pitch of one and the other one here And what we would uh, normally do is we would put the circuit in situ and we would have the light level on the sensors that we want to have when the oscillators are active. And we would then adjust the threshold, we would turn the, th the threshold down until, we, the, until both oscillators just switch on. and then any reduction in light on the sensors will cut off the oscillators. Here are some of the components for our circuit. We've got three different capacitors on the top row here. The small orange ones are ceramic capacitors. These are 100 nanofarad in value. And these don't mind which way around they get put in the circuit. So if you mix up the two legs on these capacitors, it's not a problem. However, the 470 microfarad capacitors in the middle here and the one microfarad capacitors on the right, 
those have to be put in the circuit the right way around. So they have a negative leg and a positive leg. The negative is the shorter of the two legs and it's actually marked on the side of the capacitor case as well. We have uh, two chips in this circuit and then there's the corresponding chip sockets for those. At the top of the chip socket there's a little notch and that lets you know where the top of the socket is so you can get it in the right way. And the same goes for the chips as well. There's a little half moon notch at the top of the chips. And this is all the different resistors we'll be using. There's two different value fixed value resistors. We're using 1K resistors, 1 kilo ohm resistors. And there's a color code on these which goes brown, black, black, brown and brown. And then there's two 10 kilo ohm resistors sorry, four 10 kilo ohm resistors, and the color code on these is brown, black, black, red, brown. The light dependent resistors are our light sensors. There's a pair of those, and then there's three preset potentiometers as well. And finally, you will need a piece of strip board, an audio jack, and a battery clip. So the first stage is to position and solder on the main components so these are our trim potentiometers and then we've got our chip sockets and our audio jack this is looking at the audio jack from the opposite side of the circuit so this top side here where there's no metal this is the component side of the board and this is the front of the board and the the back of the board has the 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 copper tracks on and this is the solder side of the board and you can actually see that the jack is overhanging the edge of the board here it's just a bit easier because the uh, legs on the jack are quite wide so you are you are going to need to widen the holes in order to get it to go through the board so it's easier if you just have to widen two holes and then the other two can be tacked on the end there so here are all of the main components soldered on and you can see um, there's a break in the track in between all of the, the legs on the chips. So these tracks are continuous and they run from one side to the other and when we put our chip down we don't want the legs to be attached to each other so in order to separate uh, each leg from its opposite you need to put a break in the track. You do that with a 3mm drill bit or you can use a PCB tool, a strip board tool and you just pop it in the hole where you want to break the track and you swizzle it around, you can just use your fingers for that. So the connections here, I'm using jumper wires here show all of the, the power connections to the board so the, the battery clip has been soldered on and then uh, all of the power has been connected up to the chips and to this uh, potentiometer on the bottom right as well. This next image shows all of the components and jumpers required for the oscillators. So this, is, this large cap is our output capacitor. These two smaller ones are for timing. And then there's a few resistors. Note there's a resistor here and it's standing up it's just so it doesn't take up so much room and it's actually connected between the uh, last two pins here on this chip there's also a couple of jumpers that are quite uh, they're, they're, they're just bare wire and they're quite difficult to see so there's a small jumper wire here next to the output capacitor and then there's another jumper wire here next to the seventh pin of our chip. Okay, so here we have all of the connections for the light sensors. So these yellow ones here. And there's a, a couple of ex extra resistors in there as well from our last image. And then these green flying leads coming off the bottom here actually go to our light sensors. And this image shows the, the light sensors here attached to the board. So we're not sure 
how we're going to be triggering our circuit. So what I've done is just put a small length of wire on the light sensors which allows us to mount them at different distances from each other. So it just makes it a little bit more flexible depending on our application. So here's an image of the top of the board. So this is the component side without the metal tracks on. And this marks all of the, the jumper wires here. So we've got orange jumper wires, which are the yellow wires seen in the image earlier, uh, the images earlier. There's uh, the black jumper wires, red ones, these green ones here are the flying leads which go to our sensors, our light sensors and you've got all the different values marked out as well. There's a little red circle here, here and here and this marks the negative leg on our capacitors, on our 470 microfarad and 1 microfarad capacitors so that's to help you get them in the right way around our, our the orange capacitors as we said earlier they don't mind and there's a notch here marked on our two chips so we can get them the right way up. Uh, things to note are to orientate your trim pots the correct way so you can see these three legs here make sure that you get them facing the right way. So here we're looking at the bottom of the board this is the solder side, the side with the metal tracks on and all of these blue squares are where you'll actually be making a connection where you'll actually be soldering either a component or a lead on and the red squares these are where you need to create a break in the track so we saw in the images earlier the breaks between the legs on the the chips which are these two red lines here but there's a few more breaks that we, we need just to stop um, components on the same row from connecting where we don't want them to. So it's a good idea to, to make sure you get, if you actually count across and get all of the components in the correct place and, uh, and, and take your time with that and it'll just save you time later on.